I am addicted to it, and I was talking about how this is ruining my life because I'm so obsessed with the Aura Ring. Sleep trackers have exploded in popularity, but with the recent release of Aura Ring 3 and the hundreds of negative comments flooding their social media accounts, it's time we take a step back and ask, are sleep trackers really that accurate? In 2018, I first came across Aura Ring as a means to get to the root cause of my fatigue. The first study I saw touted its accuracy beyond anything we'd ever seen before. People like Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield bought into it, and so did I. I covered it in my bestseller Unstoppable. I later retracted my recommendation in a second edition of my book after they failed to update their sleep studies. I even went so far as to sit down with the CEO of Aura, Harpreet, one hot summer day in a New York cafe to get answers. I thought to myself at the time, this is gonna tell me why I'm so tired. Instead, years later, it did something far more damaging than just burning a hole in my wallet. But first, how accurate are sleep trackers and what should you look for when buying one? I spent weeks looking over studies on sleep trackers to assess their accuracy. And the deeper I dug, the more disappointed I became, no matter how much, I wanted to believe that would revolutionize my life. I kept hitting the same nine problems. The first of which was study frequency and conflicts of interest, but they weren't even the worst. When we purchase a sleep tracker, there are rarely any studies done on the latest version of the device. By the time they're conducted, the new version has already been released. Materials could change and new sensors could be added, but the studies still lag behind. Despite Aura raising a staggering 100 million in funding in 2021, their latest study has a conflict of interest in which one of the authors of the study is an advisor at Aura Health. But that's not even the biggest problem. While there are many benefits to sleep trackers, we have to see through the hype to identify what matters most. To understand this, you must know the biohacking is one part science and one part learning to listen to what your body is telling you. The current trend in wearables is to present your data as a readiness score, which is how ready you are to tackle the day based on how well you slept last night, heart rate variability, and body temperature, depending on which device you use. The problem occurs when people rely on the readiness score to tell them how they should behave. Miguel's seen better days. His ring senses a disturbance. His temperature and blood oxygen look off. Rest mode activated. Nice work, Miguel. A study conducted in 2014 entitled Placebo, Sleep Effects Cognitive Functioning, found that sleep trackers can wield a nocebo effect that affects cognition and health. The nocebo effect is the dark side of the placebo effect. It's what occurs when someone is given a sugar pill, told it's a pharmaceutical drug that has side effects, then the patient starts exhibiting those symptoms. The concern with readiness scores is they can alter a person's behavior negatively. Studies have found that simply receiving genetic data causes a body's physiology to change in the direction of what the data predicts. If the data collected or the algorithm that the company uses to produce the readiness score is off or it's still being tested, there could be major disparities between how you feel and how you're being told you should feel. Which brings up the next major issue with sleep trackers. The algorithm that translate the data these devices produce are a carefully guarded secret. We don't know the metrics used to determine the results or the research the algorithm is based on. Nor do we understand the importance placed on each reading to calculate the overall readiness score. Right now, the research we're seeing is based on individual sensors, not the combination of sensors to deliver an overall snapshot of a body that is well rested or not. For the readiness score to hold the kind of weight the companies who promote it are giving it, then there must be a high level of accuracy for each of those individual sensors, and it must be backed by third-party independent research. For example, what if the body temperature, HRV and sleep sensors are all off by 10 or 20% each? To confirm accuracy, what is this readiness score being studied against? The potential for errors start to compound and you could end up obsessing over data that's been designed more for gamification than diagnosis. 
Which brings me to the next critical problem. So obsessed with the aura ring and looking at my sleep patterns and how badly I sleep and it shames me every day. And then all of a sudden I look up and it's gone. Just like social media, sleep and fitness trackers are designed to keep you hooked. Every time your brain expects to receive a reward, you get a rush of dopamine. The readiness score is designed to get you back to the app to re-engage with the brand, just like the likes and shares have been designed on social media. After a few years of wearing the ring, I kept asking myself, do I really need a device to tell me if I slept well or not? I know the second I wake up, I'm paying for information that's already free. Despite this, and before I get to the benefits of sleep trackers, there are two factors that we need to recognize. One, wearable devices are still in their infancy. They're not a calibrated medical device. And two, studies on activity trackers are generally done on healthy populations, while some wearables will calibrate to a user's baseline over the course of a few weeks. Considering that only 7% of the 70,000 people we surveyed internationally are considered healthy, the studies on wearables aren't designed for 93% of the population, which means the lines between marketing, profit, and accuracy begin to blur. For those of you who don't want to get taken for a ride, but you would like a sleep tracker, click the link below to get my free wearable buyer's guide for sleep and fitness trackers from my book, Unstoppable. Here's the kicker. Time will only show what the real value in companies like Aura or Fitbit are. It isn't just consumer sales. It will be in the plethora of data that's being collected instead. The information they collect is invaluable to insurance companies. While Aura states that it doesn't sell or rent your personal information and only shares your personal data with certain trusted service providers, so they can provide you with their service. I think it's important for transparency as to who this information is specifically being shared with and what its future intended use is, especially now companies like Aura require you to pay for the device up front, then put a paywall in front of the more detailed data that's your health information. It's for this reason that researchers are looking into how wearable technology can have unintended consequences beyond the nocebo effect, including the potential for insurance companies to penalize policyholders with higher premium rates or to even deny insurance based on the data they collect. There are no regulations that exist to prevent insurance companies from penalizing customers based on sleep and fitness trackers. Now, before we get to the biggest problem of all, Despite wearables being fraught with challenges, there are still some benefits if you use them as a general guide to help you recognize your sleep patterns and trends. But the important thing you must recognize is that they're not medical grade devices and nor should people keep treating them as such. The biggest challenge of all is the rate at which companies like Aura are growing. Despite a $100 million investment, don't expect good customer support. Aura has been spending big bucks on TV advertising over the past few months. The truth is Aura grew in its early days due to hardcore users like myself. He told everyone about it. But when they abandoned those users to drive profits, failed to get independent studies done, and ignore hundreds of customer complaints, you start to see the shine wear off. I've gone through three Aura rings and gave up on them over a year ago after they all failed over time. I've tested dozens of different wearables for Entrepreneur Magazine and in researching my book Unstoppable. I'm an early adopter of technology, but despite me wanting to believe that this technology can change our lives right now, I recognize the technology we still have has a long way to go. 